Hey guys, welcome back. Joe here again from scalefreak.com coming to bring you another video in the build of the Axial Racing SCX-10 II. So it's been a long video series so far and you've watched this truck go from a box to what looks to almost be a complete truck. Uh, this thing is phenomenal. Um, step by step, just piece by piece. Axial, there's a reason why it took them so long to release a new kit. They put the time, they put the effort into building this absolute beast. Oh, hands, hats off to you guys. This step here is uh, the, the bag G, open bag G or bag G. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off the radio box. Now typically in the instructions it does show you here the mounting of all the electronics. I will not be doing that in this video series. Uh, all the electronics will come at a later time. Um, and then also I will kind of give you a heads up. Now I will not be showing you how to install the roof rack or installing the uh, grill on the Lexan body because that Lexan body is going to see some work first. Uh, so it's going to be a while before you see that thing. But I might have a surprise for you by the end of this video. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, so first we're going to talk about the radio box itself. Now with this new system, I really dig in the fact that the radio box is actually built onto the side. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's molded directly in. And... It's pretty neat that it's waterproof. So this is a waterproof box. You don't have to worry about getting the old axial box and then just ridiculously slathering it with like uh, some kind of coating or something like that. But listen, this thing does go together pretty easy. So you've got in bag G the lid, a little bit different now. It fits many different sizes of receivers. A uh, little bit different with the rubber seal on the top and the rubber seals for when you're locking in your wires, which is kind of neat as well. Uh, so basically what you're going to do is with this little guy, I've already got the servo in here, so you kind of say, oh, okay, cool. So uh, put the servo wire into there. Now they're going to assume that you're using at least a two channel. You'd have to be at least using at least two channel, right? Steering and throttle. Uh, but this thing is built to be so that you could fit a three channel kind of through here. But what happens, you don't want the leak, right? Well, there's this goofy little part that's going to be on the parts tree. What this does is basically fits into this. So if you're not using a third channel like a winch or some lights or something like that, you can still slide this in there and just kind of jam it down. And then you'll be using your one and your two and it locks out the space so that you don't have to worry about water leaking into it. You didn't spend that much money on electronics just to let stuff get destroyed. So that'll help kind of keep stuff out. Now the lid itself is rubber sealed. Just kind of flip that bad boy over. Yikes! Flip that bad boy over again and slap it on the top. Four screw holes uh, and it fits just snug on the top. The screws are, they're, they're little guys, right? Just tiny little guys? No, these screws are huge, man. Just put this box in and you can spend a half a day just getting the screws locked in. There is no way that these things are coming out accidentally. So when these things are locked in, they are, uh, no bones about it, man. They're, they're staying there. That's unreal how long these screws are. They probably could have even used to be about half the size, but I'm not, I'm not gonna complain because it's, it's a good thing. Once you lock this thing down, it's gonna make an amazing tight seal on top of the, uh, on top of the system. So I'm just gonna second here. Just pretend I screwed them all in. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Give me one second. I actually kind of want to do it because, you know, it's a part of the step. And you get to watch. And you know what? Why not? Power tools. So I'll jam this thing in there. Ah. How much easier is that? If you're using power tools, guys, don't finish it. Just kind of screw it down most of the way. And then finish it back with your hand tool again. So bang, 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 and bang. So done, radio box, right? So it's gonna be sealed on the top, sealed in the side. Remember, any additional spaces, you just fill that out because you would have your two wires in there. Some people are probably gonna feel a little comfortable with even going through and just pasting a little bit of uh, like maybe electrical, liquid electrical tape or something like that on there just to finish the seal off of it, which all the power to you, buddy. That actually sounds like not a bad plan. Um, now we're gonna talk about bumpers. So first, these are pretty neat scale looking-ish bumpers. Uh, they've got the spots to put lights and stuff in and with the back, there's even the spot to be able to put in the trailer hitch. Neat, neat idea. Uh, these things, just like the old system, just kind of fit in there. 
And just like the old system, it's all just a matter of set screws. These these big guys here, right? Same thing we use to put the uh, the axle shafts in. So they feed in through the bottom on this one, which is neat because it's easier to get at if you have to make the adjustment for the length. So there's number one. I'm not actually setting adjustment for length. Uh, it shows in the instructions which specific hole to use. I am not following those instructions. I'm just putting them in there because we're not mounting the body yet anyway. I just kind of wanted to put it on there for show so you can get an idea of how big the back end is. And if you had a little toy jet, you could land it on the back because that's like the size of an aircraft carrier. So that's pretty big. And then throw the, oh, toughness. They're actually pretty tough. And they got the hoop for the D-rings, which is neat. And again, more spots for lights, and even a little spot on the front for kind of like a fair lead. Um, neat idea. It's a, it's a good step, let's call it that. So good job on you again, Axel. You're doing a good job, keep it up. So put that guy in there. Now you will notice uh, I'm not going to install the little hitch on right now. You can do it yourself. It's one more screw, uh, one more part hanging off a tree over here. But for video's sake, it's not really needed right now. No one wants to, no one's sticking around just to watch the, the, the hitch. Now, in this plastic bumper, even with the plastic bumper, there is the mount on the bumper. Let's check it out, guys. A mount on the bumper for a winch. And this is strong enough that if you mounted a winch to it, I don't think you're going to pull the bumper off. A good setup. Again, another really, really good setup. And that's really what it's looking like so far. So the bumpers, the axles, everything kind of really really slammed on there uh, it's looking phenomenal so good job now again one of the next steps would be to throw together all of the um what do you call it to throw together all of the uh the body mounts and things like that but i'm i'm not going to put the body mounts on right now again because uh, the body's going to take some time to get it all set up but i did want to mount these on because i thought this was pretty neat one second here we'll tear it off find my little scissors this comes with the sliders on the side of it are pretty neat because just like the last system, you can, of course, adjust the size of the sliders to the body that you're using because, you know, you might use a different body that might be a little bit wider. Just cut these things off a little parts tree here. Ta-da! But these look a little bit more scale as to what they actually should look like. They've actually got the step bars and stuff on the side, just like a Jeep would have uh, if you're actually doing those protective rock sliders on the side, which sole purpose is actually to slide on rocks and make sure that you don't absolutely demolish your uh, your rocker panels. So one there, one there. Perfect, that's all set in. Um, there it is. Always cover the knife, guys. You do not want to get stabbed. It sucks a lot. Uh, so, of course, for this part here, we're heading into bag H. So we technically started a new bag. Hold on, let me do this again. We're heading into bag H, and this is pretty much going to end the series so far. I'm sorry, it's got to happen eventually, right? So in here. Ta-da! Just opening these little screw bags. This is so awesome. One, two, three, four. So these are big. Remember how we talked before about those big, humongous, flat cap head screws uh, to put the servo down? Well, there's another set here to lock these things in. And the whole idea behind that is to make sure that they're flattened down really, really nice because they're going into here. Ta-da! So these things are actually going to slide into this channel right here, and that's where they go. There is screw holes, see, right here and here onto that. And then this thing, of course, will slide in and out depending on how wide your body is going to be. So, and they, the screw top is huge to make sure that it actually will cover as much ground as possible. So give me one second here. There's one there and one over here. Now it calls for a specific length um, so if you've got a measuring instrument, you can set the exact length that it's calling for in here. But that is for the XJ body, um, which, like I said, at this time, I'm not going to mount on there. Uh, but you can always, you know, mount whatever body you want or adjust these to what you want. But once you get these things locked in, it does add a little bit more to the side of the vehicle to give it kind of a neater look. So you can see like that, right? Ta-da! 
That's how that sets on. Now, a couple other things on that parched tree. Where did I put it? This, of course, is the roof rack, which we'll do later. Uh, the cool grill, which we'll do later. The super cool ass door handles, which we'll do later. Uh, all the mounting for the lighting, the side uh, mirrors, all of that later. See, all of this at a later time. Um, when the body's a little more ready to go. So ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Now, uh, one of the things I wanted to do, just to kind of put all this together and, and really kind of finish its its look quite a bit, uh, is get the wheels on it. Now, I, I'm not gonna, I did tell you I was not gonna glue these on, and I'm not going to. Uh, they're gonna go on a set of beadlock wheels, so there's absolutely no need to show how that goes on there for now. Um, but in the meantime, I do just kind of want to get these things on there just to, just to mount them to kind of complete it. I feel like it's giving us closure to this part of the video series to see this truck with wheels on it, especially these amazing wheels. I am so happy with the scaleness of that setup. So of course, we're gonna throw the pin in there. Of course, it's gonna fall out because I didn't change the angle of that. And here's one thing I also really always liked about what they Axial did with their hexes is they put that little set screw in there so that when you are on the trail, the set screw's in. And the whole idea behind that is that if you've got to take the tire off, you don't have to be afraid that the hex is going to come with it. Or sorry, that the pin is going to come with it because it's just going to lock down a little bit and make sure it doesn't kind of shimmy off. Um, you don't really need to Loctite this thing because it can't creep out when your wheel's on anyway. So, you know, there's one. Ta-da! And I'll do the other three really quick while you're watching. Because you can. So here comes number two. Man, I got a surprise for you. I'm stoked about this surprise. <laughs> So this has been a long filming series, just to kind of give you an idea. Started this filming series, I don't know, probably about uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And it's definitely nearing maybe the 1 a.m. situation right now. So my brain is a wee tad bit spent. So if you've watched the entire video series in a row, then you would have seen how I went from super crazy, uber energetic Joe, uh, all the way to I am a standing zombie, and I can't wait to hear your comments about how the end of this video is not like the first of the series. Uh, but don't worry, guys. I still have this little surprise for you that I wanted to get kind of done to show you tonight because it excites me. This is how much this kit is changing the way that I'm thinking about Axial right now and changing the way I'm thinking about scale stuff right now. And I think some of you may be excited. Some of you, you may not care. So boom, I've got that done. Get these wheels on. Ta-da, one. Oh, these are awesome. I'm really looking forward to getting the power system in this, in this truck. The official power system that's going to go in this truck when it's completed is going to be a stunner. Just waiting for it to come in. Uh, in the meantime, there will be a temporary power system so that we can get some running videos. Uh, but the, the, the end-all, be-all power system is going to be a game changer and something that a lot of people have been asking me some questions about. So I'm really looking forward to getting it put in there. And I'm not telling you any secrets yet. i got to wait till it's here. So dos... I don't know three or four in Spanish correctly, so I'm not giving it to you. Uh, I do live in a country where the national languages are English and French, so this would be toi. And this last one would be quetra. Oh, I'm so pumped for this. Every single step, this truck gets more to completion. I am so fanatically excited about what Axial has offered us 
and just what the future has to bring. You thought that the last SCX-10 was a game changer when it came to the scale stuff. I guess it was, in theory, a game creator. Um, but boom. So that's with the big bad tires on. That is the truck. There is more to come in the future as we get upgrades that become available, as the two-speed transmission becomes available, as this thing has running videos that are going to get set up, as a body, an official body gets set on this thing, as this kit officially gets a name, and as the new power system comes in here. I really hope that uh, the Scale Freak crew could bring you some impressive videos on exactly how this thing works, and I really want your thoughts and your questions about all of this. In the meantime, check this out. Ooh. That could be the future of your red knight. Ta-da! I was really excited to do that. These bumpers, of course, would have to be different, but this could be what happens with one of these trucks. I'm so excited. Finally get to run this truck. Okay, so hopefully that was enough of a surprise for you. I know for me, it's kind of I love it. I just love that look. So thank you guys again for watching the video. Thank you guys for checking it out. If you have any questions or anything, again, that's where that comment section is below. Uh, also look into the actual information of the video and you will see all of the information about uh, the video series and parts and stuff like that for the rig. Um, of course, please click on the like, please click on the subscribe, and please share this throughout your community if you have any questions. Uh, or sorry, anybody who could actually benefit from the information that's been in this video. So thank you guys again for watching this video, as well as thank you in advance for watching the series or uh, post if you've watched the whole series already. And uh, thanks for checking it out.